Mami, tu vas bien ma doudou Ah, tu vas manger ton ma doudou If you ever go to Martinique, you've got to taste Accra's. Accra's are cut fish fritters often served as appetizers. The batter is a mixture of codfish, flour, eggs and spices. If done well, they're an absolute treat. And my favorite place to get them is from Maminini in Saint Luce. She sells them on the street along with a host of other typical dishes from Martinique. Maminini is a lively, colorful and lovable character who knows how to welcome and please her customers often offering a shot of one or another rum-based drink as she nicknames everyone Doudou. Chatrou is a small octopus frequently used in various Martinican dishes. Here it is prepared as a stew with tomatoes, lemon and spices, covered with cheese and gratinade. A popular dish served in restaurants is the grilled spiny lobster or langouste as it is called here. But even those are often previously frozen as they are increasingly fewer to find in the local waters. Seafood is still plentiful in Martinique waters. Yet most of what is sold in supermarkets is imported from France, Germany and the USA. And in my opinion, you're better off getting your fish from a local market. Martinique has a long tradition of sugarcane cultivation. The second part of the 17th century sees the emergence of sugarcane cultivation on the island. Sugar at that time has become a profitable and sought after commodity and by the end of the century its production explodes. Lacking manpower, France will bring over 100,000 slaves from Africa. Their hard work and extreme suffering will make Martinique one of the most profitable French territory. Today, sugarcane is mostly cultivated to produce rum. In fact, only 20% of the crop is used for sugar production by the lone sugar plant left. As beet became a source of sugar on the continent, the traditional sugar plantations closed. The habitations, as they are called, have been converted to private homes, museums or rum distilleries. Habitation du Simon, built in the 18th century, is one of them. Their signature product is called A1710 and consists of a collection of aged rum in limited bottle production. The Habitation du Simon doubles as a guest house. La Maison du Rhum, an outlet adjacent to Habitation Simon, is a rum lover's paradise. Église Saint-Étienne du Marin. This church dates from the end of the 18th century. The history of religion in Martinique dates from the very beginning of colonization in 1635. After much bickering between the different religious orders, the borders of parishes are drawn by order of King Louis XIV and churches are built. At first, they are nothing more than wood shacks with straw roofs. But by the end of the 17th century, they look more like what is found on the homeland. Over the centuries, many were destroyed or damaged by hurricanes, earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. 
but most were rebuilt. In recent years, efforts have been made to save the rich cultural and historic heritage. Looking up at the ceiling in many Martinican churches, you'll notice a construction technique reminiscent of the shape of a boat's hull. That's because the churches were built by carpenters that were also shipbuilders. The climate in Martinique is tropical, tempered by maritime influence and trade winds. Temperature ranges year-round between 23 and 29 degrees Celsius, or 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The period from June to October is considered the rainy season, but rainstorms pass quickly and it is sunny on most days. Microclimates have sculpted the landscape and while rain is abundant on the northern part of the island, the southern part is arid, even with desert-like vegetation. Most of the island is subject to heavy short bursts of downfalls, but these are much more prevalent the farthest north one goes. Indeed, in the higher elevations, the vegetation changes to luxuriant tropical forests with dense vegetation and high humidity. The highest point on the island is Mont Pele, an active volcano reaching 1,397 meters or 4,583 feet. It last erupted in 1932. If sugar, coffee and cotton production have all but disappeared, banana plays a crucial economic role in Martinique. Banana is grown on 84% of the land used for agriculture and the near totality of the production is exported. As Martinique's popularity rises, so does the number of tourists visiting the island. Over a million visitors were welcomed in 2017 thanks in part to new airline routes as well as increased cruise ship traffic. But Martinique is not overdeveloped with huge hotels like on other Caribbean islands and as such does not attract as many tourists or the type of tourists that other islands attract. It remains unadulted, true to itself, with a strong identity. And that's exactly how the people like it here.